Hello and welcome to MuleSoft MongoDB integration video tutorial on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. This video is part of a series of MuleSoft uh, tutorials where I'm covering different topics related to MuleSoft. In this tutorial, we will see how we can integrate with MongoDB uh, from Mule4 uh, in our message flows and we will see how we can create collections, how we can insert documents into the collections, how we can find documents from the collections in MongoDB. Let's have a look at the details of the topics that are part of this video tutorial. Uh, we are going to integrate with MongoDB which is already installed in my local machine and we will be using uh, Mule4 and in AnyPine Studio we will create message flows where we will be performing various operations on MongoDB. In case if you are not uh, much familiar uh, with MongoDB, uh, I will suggest you to first uh, go through with the basics of MongoDB and I'm sure that if you have come across this video tutorial, this means that you already have basic understandings what exactly MongoDB is because I'm not going to cover uh, what exactly the architecture of MongoDB is. Rather, the focus of this tutorial will be how to integrate with MongoDB using MuleSoft. But at the high level, uh, you can understand that MongoDB is one of the widely known and popular uh, open source uh, NoSQL database where uh, you uh, store your data in the form of documents within the collections. In, in general, uh, if we talk about relational databases like Oracle, MySQL or SQL, in those cases we have the uh, data, data in the form of uh, tabular structures where we have different tables and they have relationships between uh, those tables. That's why it's called relational database. But contrary to that, in, in case of NoSQL databases like MongoDB, uh, we have unstructured data and uh, uh, we can define uh, any type of structures and we can save data in the form of documents. So uh, as an example, uh, let's suppose that you have some JSON database, uh, JSON uh, data that you want to store in the databases and you want the flexibility to store it in the form of documents within the collections, then MongoDB comes into the picture and you can save data quite conveniently and flexibility is there uh, for different structures of the data. It's not necessarily uh, true that all of the data that you save in a collection should be of the same structure. So there is a flexibility. For example, one JSON might have certain elements, another JSON might have different elements, but uh, if you want, you can store them in the same collection. And uh, if we talk about the demo in the demonstration of this tutorial, uh, where we are going to cover uh, different operations which are provided by MongoDB. And if we look at some of the major topics that we are going to cover, first of all, we will see that uh, how we can uh, we can have uh, we can use uh, MongoDB connector in Mule4. I will show you how you can uh, add it to AnyPoint Studio because by default, uh, MongoDB connector is not available in AnyPoint Studio. You will have to get it from Exchange. And once you have a MongoDB connector available in your uh, AnyPoint uh, Studio in your project, I will explain you how you can create a connection to connect to MongoDB and what are the required jars and how you can get those jars. And once you have successfully connected uh, with the connection to MongoDB, then we will be writing uh, different message flows and I will show you how we can perform various operations. And we will see how we can check if a, if a specific collection is already available or not. And if it's not available, how we can create a collection in MongoDB. And once we have created a collection, how we can insert documents uh, in, a, in a collection. And uh, in that way, we'll be saving JSON data uh, in an array of JSON containing multiple objects. And we will be saving it into the collection. Then we will see that how we can use uh, find documents operation uh, with an uh, MongoDB connector and we can fetch uh, various uh, documents from within a collection based on certain search criteria. And then we will see that how we can use uh, count documents operation which basically just gives us a count of total number of uh, uh, documents that are available in a collection based on our search query. And if you don't provide any search condition, then it get, just gives you a uh, count of all the documents that are available within that collection. So this is going to be a very interesting tutorial and you will know a lot of things. And by the end of this tutorial, you will feel comfortable uh, working with MongoDB in your Mu4 uh, integration flows. So without further ado, now let's jump into the implementation part. I have already created a project in AnyPoint Studio with the name MongoDB integration demo and this is where we are going to start our implementation. 
So if you see here by default under the palettes, uh, we just see socket HTTP core palettes. And if we want to add any new module, uh, we can search in the exchange. So I'll just click on add module. Rather, I will click on search in exchange. And here you will have to add your account. Uh, you should have any point platform account. And in case if you're already logged in, as in my case, I'm already logged in. So it's uh, just giving me my username and I'm already there. But in your case, if you want to add your account, you will have to click on this add account option. And then you can provide your username and password. And based on that, uh, you will be authenticated and you will be able to access your uh, AnyPoint platform. So in my case, I'll just uh, search for the MongoDB connector or MongoDB module and I'll just search and it will show me MongoDB connector and if you see here this is the latest uh, MongoDB connector and its version is 6.3.3 .3. so this is the uh, latest connector uh, version as of now so I'll just click on finish and once I click finish then uh, all the required uh, dependencies and jars will be downloaded and you will see that MongoDB is now available in the list of uh, modules or connectors that I have and if we see here, it provides us a quite large number of operations or, uh, or components. And we can perform all these operations using this MongoDB connector. Of course, we are not able to cover all of these operations in one video. So I will be just focusing on some of the major operations or some of the major components out of this module. And uh, you can play around with the other operations as well and uh, just try uh, how things work in this case. All right. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use uh, this JSON. Uh, if you see here, I have a sample JSON where we have category and inside that we have employees and this employees uh, is a list. So it's an array. So it, it's an array of employees. And uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to take this JSON as an example and this will be the payload uh, for the request. And we will create our message flow which will receive this JSON. And based on this category, if you see here, the category I specified as employee. So this category will be picked up and we will save it in a variable. And based on this, we will see if we already have any collection with this name. If we already have a collection, we will simply uh, save all these uh, um, objects or all of these employees into that collection. And in case if this particular uh, collection with the name employee does not exist we will create the collection and then save all of these employees in that collection and the second uh, we will uh, our flow will have uh, http listener and uh, it will be accepting post and get methods and in the post method we will be saving all of these records or all of these uh, documents into our collection and in case of get we will be um, getting the request, uh, get request, and uh, uh, with the category um, returned, uh, category sent as a query parameter, we will take this query parameter and then we will search for the employees for some specific criteria. For example, we will search only those uh, employees which are in the active status. And if we see here, uh, I have a MongoDB Compass and we can see that we have uh, a database with the name Tutorialspedia. And inside this Tutorialspedia, we already have one collection with the name Test. And what we will do is that we will create a new uh, collection with the name Employee because right now we don't have an employee collection. All right, so now let's go and start implementation. And from HTTP, I'm going to just drag a listener into uh, the design. And let me configure this HTTP listener. All right, so let me create connector configuration. I'll just click on this plus button. And it's by default on localhost 8081. Let me make it 8089. And uh, make sure that you use a port which is available in your machine. Any uh, port which is already in use, you cannot use and you will get an error. So I'll just click on OK and in the path, I will write slash Mongo. OK, so this is going to be localhost colon 8089 slash Mongo. So any request that comes on this particular uh, local, uh, URL will be accessed and will be uh, entertained by this listener. If you want in the advanced, you can specify a loud method by default, it's get and post. So I'll keep it. Okay. 
So once we receive the request, the next thing that I want to do is that I want to save my payload into a variable. For that purpose, what I will do is that I will use set variable. And here, let's give it the name as data. And the value will be payload. So the payload is going to be saved into this variable because uh, in subsequent uh, operations, uh, whenever we have, uh, if we don't provide the target uh, variable, then by default the, risk, the output of certain operation is uh, is get is going to update or going to change the payload. So that will be saved in the payload. So the actual payload that we receive in the request, that one we want to save into a variable. Okay. So once we save this data, this payload into the data variable, after that what we are going to do is that we are going to uh, use a choice router and we will decide uh, if it's a get method, then we will route the request to a different subflow and if it's a post method, then we will be routing it into to a different subflow. I will have to create subflows, but before that let me just add a choice router here. Okay, so we will choose choice router from the core module and here we are going to put two conditions. So the first condition is whenever message dot attributes dot method equals post. This means a post request, then we will be uh, inside this uh, condition we will be ref uh, we will be invoking a different subflow and the other case the default case is the get one in that case we will be ref uh, using flow reference and we will be invoking a different subflow so for that purpose first i need to create the subflows so let me choose subflow so i will add two subflows Okay, so for the first subflow, let me name it as save data to MongoDB. This will be for the post operation and the second subflow that we created, let's rename it to get data from MongoDB. So now we have created two subflows and in the main flow, we are going to use flow reference for the both cases. and we will be referring to different subflows. So in the first case of post method, the flow reference will be referring to save uh, data to MongoDB. That, that's the subflow that we want to invoke in this case. And in the second case, we want to refer to get data from MongoDB. So in this case, so far what we have done is that we have uh, configured a choice router to decide which subflow to be invoked based on the methods, based on the post or get method. Okay, now once the request will be received and data will be saved into the variable, after that, once we call this subflow, in the subflow we have to take actions according to our requirement. So, in case of save data to MongoDB, what we are going to do is that once we receive the data, we are going to first see if a collection exists or not with the name that has been passed in the JSON. So the name of the collection we want to check if exist or not is employee. So for that purpose, we will use the option, uh, this operation collection exist. So this collection exists and here we will have to choose the connection and connector configuration for our uh, MongoDB, which we haven't done yet. So we will click on this plus button. And here, if you see right now, by default, it says, please add the required driver. It's giving us an error because we haven't added MongoDB driver. So we'll click on configure. And you, if you have a local jar file, you can use that and else you can use a Maven dependency or you can choose simply add recommended libraries. So if you choose this, it shows you that following library will be added to the project MongoDB driver legacy 4.0.4.jar. So we are good to go and we will just click OK. So now it says that the required library has been added. 
now here for the server we will choose edit inline option and I'm going to provide host in port by default MongoDB runs on 27017 and I will choose local host because it's running on my local host I click on finish and I have to choose database here so if I see here I have a database with the name tutorialspedia so I will specify tutorialspedia there is no username and password so I will just click on test connection and in case everything is fine then we should get connection successful So we can see that uh, the message has appeared test connection successful which means that we have successfully configured our uh, connector configuration. The next thing that we want to do is that uh, we want to specify that which collection name we want to search if it already exists or not. So let me change it to uh, script uh, expression mode and here I will choose was dot data dot category so this is the variable uh, which will contain the category and category is the one that we are going to use to decide if this particular uh, collection already exists or not and the response that this operation gives is in the form of true or false if this collection already exists we will get the response as true otherwise we will get the response as false okay so up till now we have just uh, uh, checked if the collection exists or not but after that we are going to uh, add again a choice router and then we will decide if the collection already exists we will simply uh, perform other operation to insert the data into the collection and if it does not exist in that case what we will do is that we will uh, create the collection and then we will insert the data into that collection so the condition here will be and the output will be in the payload so payload equal equal true which means it all okay let me first take the condition of uh, false criteria so if it does not exist in this case we have to create the collection so I will choose create collection because in this case it does not already exist okay so we have to create the collection for that we already have connected configuration and the name of the collection we will choose same was dot data dot category so based on this category inside that variable we will create the collection and once we have created the collection the next thing that we will do is that we will do the insertion of the documents and we have two options insert document and insert documents so in our case we have an array of documents so we have multiple documents so we will choose insert documents and just drag it to the flow all right so in the insert documents we will have to first specify the collection name again we will specify same was that dot data dot Category. and in the document values we will specify was dot data dot category no not category was dot data dot if you see we have employees so we will we want to add employees which is an array of uh, employees so we will choose this and this is the data that we want to insert okay so we don't want to make any other changes here and after we have inserted the documents we just want to confirm how many documents have been added for that we have another operation which which just counts the number of documents in our collection so we'll choose this count documents and here again we will have to specify the collection name was dot data dot okay let me copy it from here simply in this expression mode sorry and here 
if we want to query, uh, if we want to count based on certain criteria, we can do that. But in our case, we just want to wildly count how many uh, total documents are there in this particular collection. Okay. And then let me just add a transformer to re return the response. Okay. So here in this transformer, we will create the response JSON that we want. So let me change the output to application slash JSON. And here I will just write total records and payload. So payload will be containing total number of records that are returned in this count documents operation. Up till this point, uh, what we have done is that we have just added create collection option based on uh, the condition if collection exists or not and then we are inserting the documents and then we are counting the documents and then we are just returning the response. In the default case what we will do is that uh, we will simply insert the document and we will count the document and transform the message. Okay, so let me add some loggers as well, just to make sure that we are logging uh, any required information. So uh, I will just put a logger in the beginning of both cases. Okay, sorry, I added it at the end. I will have to add it in the beginning. And this logger, I will just simply log something just to make sure that the request has landed to the correct uh, choice option. So I will choose here creating new collection to save data. This will be the message here. And in the default case, I will add a logger and I will just write saving data existing collection okay so now after we have this logger here we also need to add the document simply we don't need to create collection we will insert the document we will count and then we will transform so these are the three operations that we need to add in this case so for that purpose let me go to configurations and uh, I will just copy insert document, count document, and transformer. So these three things, and I will add it to the otherwise section after the logger. Okay, if we go back to message flow. We can see that uh, in the otherwise case, the default case, we have insert document, count document, and transform message. Okay. So in this way, what we have done is that we have uh, configured and we have uh, implemented uh, one scenario for saving the data into the database. Before we implement our other uh, uh, subflow for getting the data, let's run it and verify everything is working fine. So let's run the project and once it's running then we will hit the service from postman with this JSON and we will see the results. Right now if we go to uh, the uh, MongoDB and we see uh, we can confirm that there is no collection with an M employee. This means that the request will go to the first scenario and it will create a new collection and it will save the data. Alright, so there is a mistake from my side. Actually, you cannot run it unless unless you have all of your subflows having some implementation. So at least one processor needs to be there in this subflow as well. And that was not the case, so it failed. So let me just add a logger for now. And I will just write logger or get method. Simple. Okay, so now I will just save it. And... Uh, once we have saved it, now we will have to verify that it gets redeployed correctly and only then we will be able to test it. So when you have multiple subflows 
and any of the subflow must have at least one processor inside so right now in in our case this second subflow was blank so it was returning an error when we were trying to uh, run it in the new runtime okay now we are going to try hitting the service in the postman i have already created a request localhost 8089/mongo this is the url where the request should be landing and the same uh, json which i showed you earlier uh, with the category as employee and uh, an array of employees is going to be passed with the post method so let's try it and let's see what response we have received we can see we have received 200 okay response and total records 3 and if we see in our uh, in json we see that we have three uh, total number of uh, records so this seems good now let's go to uh, in our uh, mongodb and see how many data um, records are there in the collection the first thing we should observe is that uh, we have employees collection already created and now if we go to this collection and see we have a total of three json uh, records available three documents available in this uh, collection we can see it in different formats as well uh, let's see in the json format now and we can verify and there is some uh, uh, auto created or auto generated id also getting added for each of these uh, records or each of these documents in the mongodb so in this way we have successfully tested how we can create our documents and how we can create collections now if i try to hit this service again uh, with the same post data it should go to the default case uh, it should go into the default case because if this collection exists will return true so collection will be already there so again data will be added but this time data will be added through this particular uh, option because in previous case if you see it says creating new collection to save data as this is the, uh, the entry that we have logged so if we try again it will add same data once again but in this time we should see this log entry which says saving data to existing collection so let's try that and now total number of records returned is six because it has added the three records once again into the same collection and if we go here and if we see the console we can verify that now we got this entry here in the log which says that saving data to existing collection because this time it tried to insert data into an existing collection and if we go and we verify from our database we can see that now we have total of six records there so in this way we have successfully executed and demonstrated one case which is to save the data now so now what we want to do is that we want to implement the second case where we have to fetch for the documents from within the collection the document that we have already saved for that purpose we will be implementing this get data from mongodb uh, subflow for that purpose what we will do is that we will be expecting that uh, when the client sends a request a get request there will be a query parameter with the name collection and that will contain the name of the collection from which we want to fetch the data let me add another variable set variable for that purpose and let's uh, rename it to collection name and here i will name it this variable as collection and value for this variable will be attributes dot query params dot collection so this collection will be passed as a query parameter and once we receive this uh, request then what we will do is that we will first see uh, we will have to find all of the documents but we want to do find the documents based on certain criteria so in order to find the documents we use this find documents option this is the operation available in the mongodb connector but if we want to search based on certain criteria in the as a certain query criteria that purpose let me use transform message activity or transform message operation before this and here i will have to specify the criteria so i will use json and what i want to do is that from this uh, uh, list of all the collection uh, documents we want to search for those documents where status is equal to active so for that purpose what i will write here is it is 
and I will choose active. So only those documents where status is active, those documents we want to search from this collection. Okay, so now here in the query, I will write payload because, okay, let me switch it to expression mode because payload contains the uh, search condition that we just uh, transformed using the transform message. And in the collection name, I will write wars. Sorry, let me switch it. Wars dot collection. So that variable contains the name of collection and field we want is status. Okay, so this is the condition that we have specified to get all the documents. And after that, I will just uh, uh, have another transformer. And in this transformer, I simply want to uh, modify whatever response I want. If you want, you can have uh, any type of uh, additional elements over here for your JSON. And uh, maybe you can have find uh, you can also have a count before this but in my case i'll just uh, keep it simple and i will just write payload okay so we are going to return payload from here so now uh, let me see uh, since our project is already running so whatever changes we do those should get automatically loaded and deployed and we should be able to try from our uh, postman. So let me go to postman and uh, so let me go to postman and try to hit this request, hit this service with the get method to see how we get the data. So the request will be localhost colon 8089 slash mongo question mark collection because this is the name of uh, the query parameter and then we will pass employee so let me send the request and we can see we got 200 ok response and if now we see the response details we can see that let me show it in a better way so that you can see it so if we see here we are now getting only the status and the status we are getting ID of only those particular uh, documents where status is active. If we see here, we are getting a total of uh, maybe four records. The reason is that uh, we tried two times and we have uh, added a total of six records in the document in, in our uh, collection. And out of those six, total uh, four of them are in the active status. One, two, three, and four. Two of them are in suspended status. So now uh, we only received uh, status as a response. What if we want to receive uh, other elements also in the response for this uh, find document? So we can do that. So we will simply put a comma for the fields and let's add employee name. And employee name also we are going to add over here and we can, if we want, we can add ID as well. Let me just verify ID. And yeah, so now just save it. And once we save it, uh, this should get loaded into uh, into the embedded uh, new runtime. And once it is deployed, then we will try again, and we will see that how we get the data. Okay, now we are going to hit the request, hit the service again, and we got 200 OK response. And now, if we see, uh, you can see that we are getting employee ID, employee name, and status as well for all of the active employees only, based on the condition that we have set. So that's it from this tutorial on MuleSoft integration with MongoDB and uh, I tried to keep it as simple as possible with the simple scenarios. Of course, uh, you can always go through uh, uh, the documentation available on MuleSoft uh, official site and you can also refer to the tutorials, uh, other tutorials on various topics that I have in this playlist and you can practice more and you can uh, just explore all of the options, all of the operations that are part of this uh, mongodb uh, connector or mongodb module if you have any questions you can uh, write in the comment section i'll try my best to respond to your questions and uh, if you like this video then you can uh, just subscribe to the channel as i will have more videos like this in future so you have to stay tuned for more as uh, i'll be covering more and more advanced topic as well thank you very much